the AGM 154 JSAW, or Joint Standoff Weapon, is essentially the next evolution of the JDAM bomb, having a low radar cross section and wings to glide, giving it a significant range advantage over bombs or even Maverick missiles. For this video, I'll be assuming you understand how to use JDAMs and will move fairly quickly. If you're not familiar with JDAMs already, I recommend you learn these first, as they'll make up the foundation of your skills required to use JSAWs. You can see my detailed video on JDAMs, linked on the side or in the description. This video covers a JSAW overview, including types, range, and features, set up for both target of opportunity and pre-planned modes, including cluster patterns, multiple attack launches, and considerations for attacking targets. Weapon Overview JSAWs come in two flavours, the Alpha and Charlie variants. The AGM-154 Alpha contains a cluster bomb dispenser. This is comparable to the CBU-87 or 103 cluster bomb although it carries a slightly smaller payload of bomblets. This is effective against lightly armoured and soft targets, so do not expect to kill a main battle tank with them. They gain popularity as a suppression of enemy air defences weapon, in support of AGM-88 harms, in order to damage the launch sites afterwards. The AGM-154 Charlie, on the other hand, is a hardened target bunker buster, featuring a brooch warhead. First, this fires a penetrating charge, and then follows it up with an explosive payload into the newly created cavity. This of course is only good against single targets, ideally a bunker or aircraft shelter. Both variants being INS and GPS guided, just like JDAMs, they are fire and forget, and will have the same restrictions and limitations such as being only able to target static objects. Although it is feasible to use the Alpha Cluster Bomb variant to hit moving convoys at shorter ranges. JSAWs are built to have a very low radar cross section, making it very difficult to target and intercept. Even with dedicated self defense and low altitude interception radars, this allows you to strike an active SAM site with less risk of the weapon being shot down, unlike larger missiles such as the AGM 84 SLAM or the AGM-88 Harm. They also have considerable range, especially when used from high altitude and at speed. I've tested and collected some range information for rough guidance. The aircraft in these tests was loaded up with two AIM-9s, two single mount AIM-120s, two JSOLs, two fuselage AIM-120s, and a center fuel tank. With this loadout, I was able to achieve a maximum of 52 nautical miles range. All the tests were launched with a ground speed of 600 knots, or full afterburner if I was unable to reach target speed. As you can see, our range gains drop off beyond about 35,000 feet. Were you to have a lighter payload, it would be possible to get just a little bit more reach. Naturally, SAM sites or interceptors may prevent you from flying at such high altitudes. Thankfully, even at lower altitudes, it still achieves a respectable range. JSAW setup As with JDAMs, we need to warm up the INS and GPS on our JSAWs. On our stores page, you will see a J, S, followed by either the letter A or C for the specific variant. After selecting it, we'll see the same countdown and alignment process taking about 3 minutes just like a JDAM. Set up your fuse, either instantaneous or variable time proximity, and choose either pre-planned or target of opportunity mode. We'll require a set of coordinates in degrees, minutes, seconds and decimal seconds for pre-planned mode, and for target of opportunity, a waypoint or a designated point with the targeting pod is required. I've covered creating precise waypoints for weapons employment in the video linked on the side and in the description if you'd like an overview of the process and how to set this up in detail. 
With our mode selected, we will now navigate to the JSAL page. Here, much the same as JDAMS, only manual release mode is currently available, and unless you want to change the quantity to drop, we will not need to change anything here just now. If you are using the alpha model of the JSAL, you may wish to select the burst height of your cluster bomb. This can range from 100 feet to 3000 feet. The higher the burst, the larger the area you will cover, but of course the lower your chances are of scoring a kill, as you are spreading the same amount of explosives just over a greater area. It's worth noting there's a degree of randomness between the release and the weather, as to how and where your bomblets will go. Sometimes you will get less or more dispersion, and even the odd outlayer. To set up the burst height, enter the MSN mission page and select the UFC option. We will then configure the HT or the height by pressing HT and then enter our desired altitude. You can also select the impact heading and vertical velocity if you wish the bomb to dive onto a target or attack from a specific angle. These are not available at the time of recording however. I will cover this in an advanced JDAM JSAL setup video when they're available, which will be linked in the description. Now the weapons configured, we'll set the target. If you are using target of opportunity, select your desired waypoint on the HSI and check that it is set to the correct coordinates and elevation. Return to the HSI and press the weapon designate button. We will then follow the same HUD and HSI queuing as we've seen for JDAMs in the manual release mode, the only difference being the significantly greater range as seen on the HSI. Once the time within range timer reaches zero and changes to in range, you can press the pickle button to release your JSALs. Remember, the higher and faster you are, the greater range you will have. For pre-planned mode, we'll enter the MSN mission page instead. Here we can enter our pre-planned target's coordinates. Remember that with this update we no longer have the six pre-planned targets in total. Instead, we have six pre-planned targets unique to each station. This means you will need to program each station's target individually. Don't make the mistake of putting all of your pre-planned targets onto one station. We'll select our first station, station 2, and then pick pre-planned target 1, press the target UFC, enter our elevation, and then return to the menu. We will enter our target position in latitude, north, degrees, minutes, seconds, enter, and decimal seconds, press enter one more time. Select longitude, east, degrees, minutes, seconds, and enter, and then enter the decimal seconds. Our first bomb on station 2 is now set up, and we will press the step button to go over our next station. We will then repeat the process, entering the next set of coordinates for our second target. Remember that your currently selected station is shown on the top left, along with its currently selected pre-planned target. Now, if we drop our bomb, it'll home in on the pre-programmed target and cycle automatically to the next station, which we have already configured on its own target so we can immediately press the pickle button again to release it without having to change anything as we go along. If you are using double mount JDAMs or JSALs however, you'll want to put in two pre-planned targets on the station, and then manually select the second pre-planned target after dropping on the first one, when you return back to that first station. This can get a little confusing as the aircraft automatically cycles to the next station after you drop a bomb if one is available. For example, if we were to drop four JSALs on four targets using two double mounts, 
we would program in targets 1 and 2 onto pre-planned 1 and 2 on the left station, station 3, and targets 3 and 4 onto pre-planned 1 and 2 on our right hand station which is station 7. We will then ensure that both stations are using pre-planned 1 as their intended target. Then we will drop 2 in rapid succession. These will drop on the selected targets stored in pre-planned 1 on each station. We then need to manually select pre-planned 2, release the bomb and select pre-planned 2 again for the second station. All of this applies to both JSAMs and JSALs. Dropping multiple bombs in a single pass with target of opportunity remains unchanged. You simply designate a waypoint, drop and repeat. Making this the potentially easier way to understand the setup, especially if you're uncertain what targets you will be attacking. In the near future, we'll see the Brew 55 dual mounts having both left and right substations, rather than just a single shared station. This will make it possible to salvo drop as many as 8 JDAMs or JSALs in one go, all on independent targets. So keep an eye out for this feature being added later on. Weapons Employment Considerations Finally, a few notes on attacking targets with JSALs. Unlike JDAMs, JSALs will take a fairly shallow path and attempt to glide to the target. Unfortunately, they lack any terrain avoidance ability, and as such they will happily fly into the side of steep hills and mountains. Be careful when employing them against targets in valleys, and in this situation it's best to fire down the valley rather than across it. Additionally, until we have the ability to set up our JSAL's terminal bearing, the JSAL will fly the direct path from your aircraft to the target so it is best to align your aircraft and the launch with the line of the targets you're expecting to attack if you're using the AGM-154 Alpha with its cluster munition dispenser as they spread out in front and behind of your given coordinates along its flight path. As fun as it is to launch 8 J cells like a swarm of angry bees each dedicated to their own single target this loadout is somewhat unlikely. A personal favourite CAD loadout is to take two AIM-9s, two HARMs, one double rack of JSAL Alphas, two fuselage AIM-120s and two fuel tanks in the double ugly configuration, allowing you quite an effective standoff attack ability when going against known SAM sites. Of course you can trade out the wing fuel tank for an extra two JSALs if you're flying a shorter route or have access to a tanker. When attacking a large area, such as a SAM site, I'd recommend dedicating one JSAL per group, rather than attempting to spread your JSALs over a large area with a high burst height. Spread your target points apart instead. Oh and uh, the brevity for launching an AGM-154 is PIGS, or PIGS away. Happy hunting, and take care.